hello all welcome to today's session on voltage joint analysis today we will see the basics of voltage joint analysis and few parameters related to voltage joints in the next lec uh, next video or next lecture we will see the actual demo today we will see the preliminary part of it so let's get started so we will see uh, what are the bolted joints uh, then bolted and welded joint analysis demo demo will be a separate video wherein we will see the welds as well uh, then we will have some question and answers and we will have a demo so in bolted joints uh, we have two types of uh, joints one is hard joint and another one is soft joint in the hard joint uh, if you see here Uh, we have slip critical and uh, shear critical joints it means uh, in the slip critical if the slip happens between two uh, joint part using the bolts so if uh, if there is any relative motion between those two parts then the slip uh, will happen and we will say that the joint has failed but that is not case with the shear critical joint or uh, if the slip ha uh, happens still the bolt can take the shear load and uh, if the bolts are failing in shear we will say the joint has failed uh, again we have two types of loadings uh, that is transverse loading and axial loading and sometimes we have mix of these two as well so for simplicity we will keep these two loadings separate uh, next category is soft joint uh, here I have shown the hard joint and soft joint if you see in the hard joint uh, all the mating parts are connected to each other and there is no space between two parts but if you see the soft joint here in between these two tubes you can see a uh, void is there or space is there so uh, this is a soft joint means uh, from the bolt head to the nut uh, in between this uh, the part is not continuous one so if you see in the hard joint the part is continuous one there is no hollow portion here so now how to convert a uh, soft joint into hard joint and why we need the hard joint why we prefer the hard joint we will see that in the next slide so in slip critical joints uh, application is gasket means if the joint has slipped it means uh, you have the chances of leakage so force transferred uh, due to friction between joining plates and not by the bolts so if you see here uh, it is taking transverse shear as well as uh, the bending load and here three plates are connected to each other using a hard joint so I have just for the simplification I I have shown here detailed for the uh, slip critical joint if you see here uh, this is uh, the normal force that is uh, nothing but the preload bolt preload uh, the bolt preload will act uh, from this section to the bolt head from bolt head it will get transferred to this plate from this plate it will get transferred to the interface of joining plates so the relative force you can calculate uh, using the coefficient of friction and the normal force so if you multiply these two you will get the uh, critical force uh, at which the joint will slip so the same thing uh, happens at the bottom from the nut uh, it will go to the plate and from plate to it will again go to the interface where uh, those two plates are getting joined so this is how the uh, mechanism of force transfer in the slip critical joint in shear critical joints uh, this bolt uh, 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 surface means cylindrical surface of the bolt or shank takes the load and a uh, slip is allowed so applications of uh, shear critical joints are rivets on the bridges uh, then force transfer due to the bearing and shear between uh, joining plates uh, full bolt preload can be applied as joint stiffness is high in case of uh, hard joint but in soft joint we cannot apply this uh, we will see in the next slide so here if you see the soft joints uh, we have one angle uh, which is connected to this uh, square tube and once you apply the preload uh, what will happen uh, the stiffness difference is there means if you compare the right side here with the left uh, sorry uh, left side with the right side on the right side we have the high stiffness than left side so obviously uh, the less stiffer part will start deforming 
and once you apply the preload uh, uh, <coughs> the parts will start getting bent okay so i will try to show you here so i will just delete this square and uh, you can see the effect so if you see here uh, because of the uh, stiffness uh, difference here we have the more stiffness so it will not deform first the less stiff part will deform and hence you can see the uh, potential uh, distortion because of bolt preload will happen to this square tube and that is the reason uh, why uh, it is uh, advisable to convert the uh, soft joint into the hard joints because you cannot apply the whole preload if you apply the whole preload the less stiff parts will start deforming and uh, in this case uh, soft joints are always treated as shear critical because once you apply the preload there is a, uh, there is already some relative def uh, deformation between a uh, relative displacement between bolt uh, head or nut and part so uh, this is uh, the reason why uh, we avoid the soft joints uh, generally 20% uh, of full preload is applied as tube starts bending inwards due to hollow section so full preload is not applied in soft joints this is a very uh, means general number and uh, should not be taken blindly uh, then we have the bolt classes and tightening methods so in if you see here 8.8 uh, .8 grade bolt and uh, if you multiply the first digit with the 100 you will get the tensile strength of the bolt and uh, the second uh, digit after this uh, point it gives the yield strength uh, means if it is 0.8 here means 80 percent of the tensile strength so if you multiply this 80 percent with the tensile strength it will be 640 mpa so the 8.8 uh, class bolt has 800 mpa as tensile strength and 640 uh, mpa as yield strength so again we have the different uh, property class uh, their sizes and possible ranges then minimum proof strength required minimum tensile strength required and minimum yield strength required so I had taken this uh, snap from the Shiglet's uh, machine design book and uh, the credit goes to them. Then uh, here the material is uh, specified and uh, how those grades are marked on the bolt head are shown here. Now next question is, uh, is the thread shear uh, correct or uh, how we uh, get it? We will see that in the next slide. Here you can see the different bolt tightening methods and respective accuracy so though you are applying some bolt preload but uh, it depends on how much it get applied in a reality so here is the chart which shows that uh, different methods and uh, respective accuracies so if you see here uh, strain gauge bolts have highest accuracy uh, because you are able to measure the exact force uh, in that case and also the second most accurate method is to use the ultrasonic control wherein you will measure the bolt stretch most widely we will be using the torque control with uh, hand wrench uh, means uh, torque wrench we call it as uh, uh, and then uh, the next method which is most commonly used if you do not have the torque wrench is turn off nut method now uh, we will see the bolt material strength and uh, how it happens so if you see in this curve at the initial uh, uh, means when you start preloading the joint at initial phase you can see there is a slight uh, nonlinear curve in the preloading part uh, this happens because there are uh, some irregularities on the surface of the joining plates and uh, because of those irregularities when you start applying the force uh, those get flattened and uh, you will get some nonlinear behavior so uh, now we, when it comes to defining the uh, allowable joint load uh, we first calculate the yield point from yield point we will calculate the proof load uh, typically it is taken as 0 0.9 uh, that is 90% of the yield and uh, on proof load 
not on yield point on proof load we will take 75 percent of the proof load uh, which comes near about uh, 67 to 70 percent of yield uh, value and this proof load is nothing but the actual clamp load or uh, allowable load you can say so if you see the thread shear here uh, if you join uh, load any uh, nut or kind of thing or threaded uh, portion so all the threads uh, do not share all the loads so if you see here the load distribution on a grade 8 nut so the first thread always takes the maximum load it is shown in the uh, FA result as well here uh, so it goes on decreasing and after certain level uh, the thread doesn't sh uh, share any kind of load so in reality uh, the force transfer mechanism is a bit different uh, than what we consider in the sh uh, thread share calculation wherein we will consider all the bolts are sharing equal loads that is assumption but in reality that doesn't happen uh, then uh, we have the different uh, uh, means uh, class of bolts different grading of the bolts so all these things uh, uh, these criteria and uh, load uh, sharing all these parameters depend on the different factors such as friction then whether the bolt is lubricated or not type of coating so uh, this is uh, about the important thing that is yield strength proof load uh, clamp load then how the um, loading happens in the threads the next is uh, bolt load diagram so actually when you start uh, applying the force or applying preload on the bolted joint the plate starts compressing and the bolt uh, start elongating so elongation of the bolt uh, will result in a compression of the plate and uh, if you see in this graph the compression is shown on negative side and uh, the ex extension of the bolt is uh, shown on uh, right hand side so if you see here uh, the bolt will extend more and the plates will extend less so the deformation measured is on x-axis and force is on y-axis so the plates will be deforming less and the bolts will be deforming more in the hard joint but that may not be the case with the soft joint so uh, and once you shift this point or shift this point on the positive axis and uh, put it here you will get the diagram something like this if you just move this to this and here you can see the joint compression means the plates how much they are compressed here and how much bolt is extended here so this is the yield point of the bolt and uh, this is the joint clamp force uh, you can say so here if you see uh, the bolt is loaded beyond the yield and uh, that's why uh, bolt force increases this and we have this uh, joint extension and because of this yielding of the bolt uh, there is a gap which is got uh, created here so this is one of the particular failure case wherein I tried to explain with the graph now uh, this is the ideal graph wherein uh, bolt joint is in uh, uh, bolts uh, joint is in compression and bolts are in tension so if you see here uh, this on this graph if you see the uh, gap it is here it is it will get denoted uh, by this so this is how you can uh, predict all the types of uh, whether the gap is getting created whether the plates are getting separated or whether the bolt is yielding what is the maximum allowable load so from this diagram you can uh, get the idea here is uh, again one uh, diagram actual expected loading should be between the maximum allowable load so if you see here this is the actual expected loadings uh, some portion of the maximum allowable load so if you see here this is the uh, force at which the joint will start separating or you can say the maximum allowable uh, force you can apply to the joint uh, then here is uh, one question uh, does every time bolt fails first or the plate so it uh, it goes back to the design and not uh, in the bolt analysis generally uh, all the bolted joints uh, designed in a way that bolt should fail first because replacing the bolts is easy task rather than uh, replacing the components or parts which are bolted together so it is uh, always designed 
like that the bolt should fail first then uh, at syscad we have design then we have a computer aided design and drafting then we do the fea uh, computational fluid dynamics multibody dynamics and uh, manufacturing simulation for more details uh, visit www.syscad.co.in if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel uh, please subscribe if you have any question comments uh, you are encouraged to share those in the comment section turn on notification if you like this video hit the like and share with your friends so thanks uh, that's it for the today's session uh, in the next session we will see the demo of uh, actual uh, bolted joint connection so if you have any question you can reach out to us uh, at uh, this info at syscat.co.in or you can whatsapp on this uh, number as well thanks